On the basis of the supply and demand analysis um, of the loanable funds market, which we introduced in the previous video, here we're going to uh, start shifting the curves. Okay? Um, on the demand side, we said, you know, on the loanable funds market, um, the demand comes from the the firms, okay, the real investors, they would like to purchase uh, equipment, tools, machinery to be able to produce. Um, the analysis on the on the demand side or the shift of the investment curves, you guys can go ahead and check out the books, okay, the textbooks, um, and uh, find some examples over there. Uh, we are not going to spend time talking about the shift of the demand curve in this video because we really want to focus on the government fiscal policy discussion. Okay, So we're going to just look at the change in saving, which is the supply side of the loan funds market. Okay? Generally speaking, there are two types of two types of fiscal policy tools for a government. Uh, they could change the government spending or they could change their tax revenues. Okay? Oftentimes, uh, you would find that this kind of the fiscal policy debate would occur when the economy is hit by a recession okay? because during the normal times you know without any specific reasons um, or very strong justifications the government spending and uh, taxes should be uh, stable or consistent over time okay like there might be a, a growth in spending uh, year by year but the growth rate should be stable or consistent okay uh, but during the recession the situation would be different okay and politicians would make a different argument on what the government uh, is supposed to do for example a pretty um, popular argument among democrats is uh, the government should increase its spending as a response to a recession. Okay? Um, so that, you know, the government could pull the economy out of a recession. Okay? Now here, let's use the three-step method we introduced in Chapter 4 to look at the effect of uh, increasing government spending. Okay. Or sometimes we say spending hikes. Okay. Now here, uh, this is actually, you know, if you have a solid understanding of the supply and demand analysis in Chapter 4, you would find this part would be quite easy. Okay. Now step number one, we're going to start with an increase in government spending. Okay. Suppose the Congress... Uh, decides to increase the spending okay? um, for example to support small businesses to um, build more uh, roads the interstate highways or railroads more infrastructure projects something like that okay or spend more on public schools now um, this would directly affect the supply side or saving okay um, it will make the national saving decrease okay on the graph we're going to shift the saving curve to the left okay and let's show that here on the graph oops um so this is uh, on the loan funds market. This is R. Okay. Here on this side, it's a quantity of the loan funds. 
and as we said before this is a downward sloping investment curve and upward sloping saving curve okay national saving uh, let me write out the formula y minus c minus g again we derived these in the previous video okay so we said that how much a nation saves as a whole depends upon how much it produces okay and uh how much the households consume how much the government spends okay so y minus c minus g and from the equation you can pretty easily figure out a higher government spending will lead to a lower national saving okay all right let's uh label the initial equilibrium point let's say point a here and suppose this is a R1, the initial uh, equilibrium interest rate, and the initial quantity of loanable funds. Now here, as we said, there's a, a leftward shift of the supply curve. So let's shift it to the left. And let's see, this is a S prime. Okay, here is step number one. Again, everything uh, should be quite close to what we did in chapter 4 okay now second step we're gonna focus on the price on the loanable funds market this is a real interest rate okay now we start with the conclusion of the step number one there's a decrease in saving okay now if um, the interest rate sticks with R1 we're gonna see on the market here uh, there would be a uh, th this point stands for the quantity supplied because it's on the supply curve and point A now stands for only quantity demanded because remember supply curve already shifted it's not here anymore right so this is quantity demanded this is quantity supplied we find quantity demanded exceeds quantity supply so there's a shortage on the market at R1. Okay, let's write it here. Shortage at R1. Okay, and uh, the shortage will push up the equilibrium price or the equilibrium interest rate from R1 to R2. So this is actually step number two, right? So the real interest rate goes up, okay? This is a second step. The third step would be, um, we're gonna look at the other side of, the con uh, of this market, okay? So in the first step, we already look at the, the savers or saving. Now we're gonna look at the investors, okay? Who demands for uh, loanable funds. Now, when the interest rate goes up, the that means the borrowing cost for the firms increases. Okay, or more generally, you could say the opportunity cost increases. Okay. Um, because the, when the firm goes to a bank and take the loan from the, the bank, uh, it has to pay a higher interest um, payment to be able to uh, get the loan, right? So that leads to a decrease in investment, okay? So the firms will be discouraged uh, to you know take more loans and make more investment okay now um that means here on the horizontal axis we see a decrease in quantity demanded okay the third step now here you could definitely say quantity demanded for loanable funds but just to make it easier and simpler i just put i here as an investment okay as we said back in chapter four, here it should be quantity uh, demanded. Okay, but we're assuming that you already 
know that you already uh, been familiar with that. Okay, and uh, eventually we would like to show uh, here the new equilibrium point B. So uh, the market equilibrium is moving from A to B. All right. So this is a three-step analysis. Um, it's a, a special application to the loan bond funds market. Okay. Now, um, towards the end of this, we find that you know the uh, the initial government uh, initial increase in government spending leads to a decrease in private investment. Okay. So here we said the firms would. Um, less likely um, to invest. Okay, uh, this is definitely undesirable. Okay, because remember at the beginning we said this is a response to a recession, right? So as a response to the recession, uh, the government wants the firms or businesses to invest as much as possible, right? But now we see a decrease in quantity um, uh, in investment, right? So this is totally undesirable. Okay, and this thing is so called the crowding out effect. In other words, the increase in government spending crowds out private investment okay now here um one thing i would i would like to bring up to your attention is uh, there's a very common misconception about the crawling out effect sometimes students tend to believe that crowding out effect takes place simply because when government spends more it comes to you know some private area private industries or sectors and takes away the profitable opportunities so that uh, these opportunities won't be available to private firms the crowding out effect actually goes far beyond that far beyond a specific group of private firms or sector or industry Okay, so for example, um, if we think about the, the solar panel, uh, if the government wants to support that and spend a lot of money on that, you know, um, to, to develop the solar panel, um, uh, like the power field, right, uh, generate a lot of power, uh, so that you would worry about, you know, these opportunities won't be available to the private firms. But here, what we're talking about goes far beyond that. We're saying that the uh, crawling out effect takes place not because certain opportunities have been, have been taken away by the government. Instead, we are saying that because government spends more, so uh, we find on this market that um, the interest rate went up from R1 to R2, okay? So it becomes more expensive for the, all the firms out there to borrow, okay? No matter it's a solar panel uh, power firm or if it's a, a automaker or if it's a restaurant, okay? Um, across the country, when they go to uh, the loan of funds market and trying to borrow, it's gonna be more expensive. This is even going to affect the consumers when we go out and trying to take a mortgage to buy a house or take the car loan. It will affect us as well because of the higher interest rate. Okay. Now, uh, in the next video, we're going to uh, present some empirical evidence. So what we have done here is just a theoretical reasoning we need to see the empirical evidence to know if this is really working on the ground okay and we will also talk about the effect of um, uh, decreasing taxes uh, because tax cuts are are um, very popular among republicans so we're going to talk about that okay.